talked about bringing out the military. They talked about seizing voting machines. This country has done one thing that was more amazing than any other. Uh, they've done many amazing things, but to me, the jewel in our crown, the peaceful transference of power. So many countries cannot get this right. Yes. We were one of the few who could get it right. And one guy, your boyfriend, Donald Trump. Oh, come on. Broke no. this and come on. fucked don't, don't it. Give, don't give me That's the boyfriend exactly stuff. Come what, on, come on. I, I'm running against him in this race, okay? I, I think I'm you're running this, to be his vice president. Well, I'm glad you smoked that view out. I've already said, and I'll say it again, I'm not going to work for a, any administration. So you would say no to it? Yeah, I would say no. You would say no to the vice presidency if Donald yeah. Trump offered it to you? I don't do well in a number two role. I just don't. To start, you're 38. I don't do well in, I've, I haven't been in a number two role in a long time. I think there's a lot of ways to change this country. Wow. And each person has to look in the mirror and ask themselves, how do you have the maximal impact you can? So I do it through the private sector. I so, three books in the last two years. I start so businesses. You, for That's you what I only do. go right to the top or... Well, to me, it's not a hierarchy. It's not about a top. Well, it is. It's about where am I going to have you, the most impact? You will literally point. not be the second most powerful person in the world. If power were if power <laughs> were my currency and the probability adjusting my power calculus, yeah, of course you would take it. But if the question is actually how am I using my God-given talents to have a maximal positive impact on a country that has given me so much, being in that vice president role wouldn't be it. All right, guys, so we got to talk about this conversation between Bill Maher and Vivek Ramaswamy, in which Bill Maher is going to show us once again that he has a severe case of Trump derangement syndrome. And Vivek Ramaswamy is low-key going to call out Bill Maher on his Trump derangement syndrome. He's actually going to use the word derangement when describing how these people are literally obsessed with with Trump and the things that Trump did in the past, they're so obsessed with Trump that we can't move forward into the future as a country. And I think this is a fascinating conversation that I want to react to. But before I react to that, I actually want to react to the first video that I played for you guys as the intro clip, which is Vivek Ramaswamy basically declaring that he doesn't want to be Trump's number two. Now, the reason why I'm reacting to it is because um, I've said multiple times on my channel that if Trump was smart, right, he would be picking Vivek Ramaswamy to be his VP. And some people in the comment section say, Vivek doesn't want to be a number two. He's only a number one. And yes, I understand that, right? I know that Vivek Ramaswamy doesn't want to be VP or he says he doesn't want to be VP, just like every other candidate in the race says they don't want to be VP, okay? I would expect somebody who's running to be president, who's running to be number one, to come out and say, I don't want to be number two, right? Now, if he's actually picked to be VP, I think there's going to be a whole different conversation to be had. Maybe he will still turn it down. But I think that when people say that, hey, I don't want to be VP and they're running for president, people really shouldn't look into that too much because of course he can't come out here and say, yeah, I'll be fine with being vice president, right? That's a guaranteed way to lose. You're showing that you don't want to be number one. And the people that you want to be president are people that want to be number one, right? They want to win, okay? You don't want to settle for somebody who's okay with second place, right? So again, I wouldn't look into that too much. We'll see if Trump actually picks Vivian Swami. If Vivian Swami turns it down, I'll be severely disappointed because I think that regardless of what happens to his campaign, um, and how well he does. I think that the GOP desperately needs more Republicans out front and center like Vivek Ramaswamy, who I think does have a chance to actually bridge the gap between Democrats, Republicans, independents. I think that he can do that. I think that he is by far the best GOP candidate when it comes to unity. And honestly, like I said, he should have some type of government position. Okay. Um, he may feel like his talents are best used in the private sector, but man, oh man, oh man, I'm just saying, we need more people like him in government, especially in the Republican Party, right? The Republicans desperately need more people like Vivek Ramaswamy and how he presents information and ideas. So without further ado, let's go ahead and react to Bill Maher uh, melting down over Vivek Ramaswamy supporting Trump and not attacking Trump and let's you know get into it because again this guy has a severe case of Trump derangement syndrome which is far too common in this country 
both sides. The Republicans are just the hypocrites because they pretend that they're the fiscally responsible. Well, the way I look at it, that's why I don't talk about Republicans and Democrats, like I said. I think they're but you're far running more a, right. on the same party than they are not. But Even if in two-party systems, if you, you got to use ballot access to get on a ballot. And that's your team. You can't alienate them. They're, you're going to have to. I know you only want to be number one. I want to unite the entire country. I want to unite the entire country. And I think there's well, two Well, you theories. can't. Well, Bill, I, I'm hoping. Wow. How smug is that? <laughs> right? How smug is that for Bill Maher to tell this man, you can't unite the country. <laughs> right? You can't do it. What are you doing? You're in over your head. Again, this guy, Bill Maher, he may still be a so-called classical liberal. Right? But there are some things about him that I think just really annoy me. Again, mainly the smugness. Okay? The know-it-all attitude. Um, <laughs> this guy, in my opinion, he needs a, a, a serious type of reality check, right? He needs to be bought down a couple levels. Okay. He's really full of himself. Hopeful that we can. <laughs> I think this, this yeah, no, but, I, but, but I share give me that one, bro. <laughs> yeah. But here's what I would say is like 20 years from now, I don't think we can. I think we're in a window where we have a shot at getting this done on actually not celebrating our okay. diversity, but actually finding a common thread that all of us okay. still share as Americans. But I think it exists. Can I give you some campaign advice? Yeah. You, it, you're a, such a personable guy. You're so smart and you're, you, the energy is amazing. But unless you soften on Trump, the, the, at least half the country that knows that he's an obnoxious criminal they're never going to accept you as the guy who can unite us. I can't see, accept you as see, that. Take see, again, this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> this is the level of Trump derangement syndrome that this guy Bill Maher has. This is what he's saying. I know you're not Trump, but because you embrace Trump's policies and you don't want to lock up politicians or your political opponents or people that you disagree with politically on politically motivated charges that otherwise would not be applied to other people on a certain side of political aisle, like, for example, Hillary, when it comes to her violation, clear violation of the Espionage Act, or Joe Biden, when it comes to his investigation and to his classified document scandal that we all know nothing's going to come of that, right? They're not actually going to put Biden in jail, okay? They're not actually really going to go after him for that. What Bill Maher is saying here is that unless you want to lock up Trump, <laughs> unless you're on board with the lock up Trump train, um... Hey, I can't really support you. Even though we know you're a smart guy, Trump's policies were good for the country. Uh, you know, you're too you're too in bed with the guy, right? <laughs> you you don't want to lock him up. You don't want to see him in prison. And because of that, uh, I can't get on board with it. I would argue that this type of rhetoric here coming from somebody that claims to be a classical liberal that is, you know, not on the same train as the progressives or even the mainstream Democrat Party when it comes to a lot of issues, this type of rhetoric right here is exactly why we can't unify as a country, right? We can't come together because even when you have a candidate that says, hey, I'm trying to unify the country, oh, well, you don't want to see Trump locked up, right? Therefore, we can't get on board with your campaign or I can't get behind you because you don't want to see Trump locked up. Well, that's why we can't have unity, right? That's why we can't have unity. A part of achieving the unity that people claim that they want, but again, you know, liberals don't really want it. A part of achieving that means that, yeah, we probably shouldn't be locking up the former president of the United States on politically motivated charges, unless we're going to be doing it to the Democrats too, right? Unless both sides of the aisle are going to face consequences for what allegedly are crimes. If you're going to hold both sides to the same standard, okay, cool. But if you're not going to hold both sides to the same standard, then if you want unity, you can't lock up the former president of the United States on politically motivated charges that would never be levied against Democrats. Again, that's that's the exact opposite way that you achieve unity. But again, Bill Maher, Joe Biden, Democrats, they don't want unity. They don't really want to live in the same country as people who disagree with them politically. That's the truth. Take like a Chris and Christie I'm somebody figure who's who, in this. I'm somebody me. who is like... It's in a different place. I'm, I'm not motivated by vengeance and grievance. Do you know how much shit I get from the left? A lot. I know be, you do. Be, yes. I know you do. Because and I, that's I don't, why I'm here. And I respect I, you. I, thank you. Because you can and actually respect, speak to, in some ways, your own tribe. I, it's like my right? thing is, if you expect me to get on the crazy train with you, mm -hmm. and and if I don't, then I, I lose my liberal card, fuck you. 
You're changing what liberalism, not me. So, you know, I'm a guy who could be your like biggest supporter kind of guy, right? Because I understand your critiques of the left and a lot of them are valid, not all of them. But that is a albatross around your neck. The, the inability to call Trump and just the, the most fundamental thing about America, once again, not to beat a dead horse, but the peaceful transference of power. Okay, so what he's saying is that well, your inability to call Trump out or to attack Trump is was really holding Vivek Ramaswamy back from getting people like Bill Maher on board, right? Which again, symptom, right? Symptom, major symptom of Trump derangement syndrome. I, I like you. I, I can be your biggest fan, but you won't attack Trump, right? <laughs> Again, what is Vivek Ramaswamy attacking Trump going to do? It's not going to do anything. It's not going to do anything. It's not going to help him in a Republican primary. And this is something, again, Republicans like Ron DeSantis, for example, don't really understand. They don't get, okay? Don't get me wrong. I like Ron, but I think that his advisors are absolutely terrible. In fact, I think that most advisors and strategists for a vast majority of these GOP candidates are absolutely terrible, okay? I'm going to keep it 100 with you. Um, in Ron DeSantis' case, his campaign should have been the same campaign that Vivek Ramaswamy is running right now, right? If he was going to run, he should be running the campaign that Vivek Ramaswamy is running right now. But instead, he decided that an element of his campaign would be him trying to attack Trump, go out the Trump, instead of just focusing on, hey, America first policies were great. Trump did some great things for this country. I've done some great things in Florida. I'm the guy that should be up next to continue what Trump started, which is exactly what Vivek Ramaswamy is running on. Vivek Ramaswamy is running on, hey, this is Make America Great Again 2.0. Because everybody knows that Trump is not going to be here forever. Okay? And Ron DeSantis even acknowledged that in one of his interviews where he allegedly low key called Trump supporters listless vessels. When he was, again, talking about how, well, we, we can't continue this movement if it hinges off of the social media posts of one man. And I'm saying, okay, well, I, I think you're correct. However, you have to be convincing these people that, hey, you're the guy that can carry it forward. Because I personally believe that if Trump loses in 2024, it's over. I think that all his momentum kind of goes away. Somebody else is going to have to rise up, right? It's going to have to be the guy. He'll be too old at that point. If he wins, great. That's his last four years in office. Again, somebody else is going to have to be that guy. Vivek Ramaswamy is running circles around Ron DeSantis in regards to convincing people that he can be that guy. And the worst part about it is that Ron DeSantis had a leg up on this. He had a leg up on this. He should have been the person that should be saying, no, this is Make America Great Again 2.0. I'm the next guy that's going to carry this movement to the next level. I'm going to continue what Trump started, and I'm going to take it up another notch. He should have been that guy, but he failed to do that, and that's why he's losing. Again, I like Ron DeSantis. I like the things that he did for Florida, but his campaign strategy has been absolutely terrible, and I think Vivek Ramaswamy, in the ascension of Vivek Ramaswamy, really does highlight how, damn, that's the campaign that you should have been running. And that doesn't mean that Trump can't be criticized. It's just in this political environment, considering how the man is the most attacked and criticized person on the earth, on earth, you don't gain anything from attacking or criticizing him. You gain nothing <laughs> at all. You're not gaining anything. Maybe except weight, right? <laughs> I mean, look at Chris Christie, okay? The dude's been attacking Trump more than anybody, okay? He's the first time in his life where he's bitten off more than what he can chew, okay, in regards to running for president simply to take down Trump, and look how that's working out, right? It's a disaster. It's an absolute disaster because he's not saying anything different than what everybody else has said about Trump, and it hasn't worked. So why even do it? But again, these people are paying strategists and consultants millions of dollars to tell them how to lose. It really is amazing to watch. One guy said finally 
No, I'm just not going to say it. There is no possible scenario. You should read the the, the transcript of what he was saying to the sec- to the person in yeah Rafsenberger in Georgia, the one he's just on trial for now. Now we know about the. Um, I, le- I need you to find 11,000 votes line. The one that I found so chilling, at the beginning, he says, right away, he said, uh, you know, if you saw the lines, I just saw the lines of the people waiting to see me, yeah. and uh, there's no possible way I could have lost Georgia. This is a guy who thinks he couldn't lose the state because the lines at his event, this is like me saying, you know, I'm going to be at the uh, MGM Grand September 16th and 17th. Uh, That's true. And like I could go outside after the show and I saw the lines to see my show and uh, there's no way I'm not the biggest act in Las Vegas. Bill, can I just make an observation? He's crazy. Can I make an observation? He's stupid and crazy. You've got to to decouple. Well, no, he doesn't. No, he does not. He doesn't have to decouple. Because what Bevin Ramaswamy is running on is not that he's Trump, is that, hey, I'm going to take make an America great again, America first policies, I'm going to take it to the next level. Everybody knows how the economy was, how the country was in great shape the first three years under Trump. Best economy we've seen in a long time. We're in the best position as a country on the world stage that we've ever been in in a long time. He doesn't have to decouple himself from Trump. Everybody knows he's not Trump. In fact, he's running against Trump. Not sure if Bill Maher realizes this, right? That this man is running against Trump. But again, his Trump derangement syndrome is so bad that he he seems to forget that this guy is actually Trump's opponent, okay? I mean, this is just, wow. I mean, he need to he need to take a few more hits of, of that weed, okay? He needs to calm down, okay? He's losing it. From I'm Donald running. Trump. That's I'm, the path. I am running as my own man in this race to lead us to something. And here's the thing. And this is not specific to Trump. But Trump, anyone, everyone in this race running is included in this when I say this. The Republican Party for a long time has been a party that has been running from something. Okay. Here are all the evil things and we're running from them. I think I am the only person in this race who is actually trying to lead us to something to an actual vision of what it means to be an American. You are a thoughtful man. Okay, I am here because I. you are not shackled by some party's orthodoxy. <laughs> Plainly. Plainly. Or and anything. We can, and, 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 and I'm glad that we've done it twice over the last few years, and you've read some of my books, and I've read a lot of your work, and there's so much that we could be delving into. This question of, you know, is there a role for the village elder or not? Interesting. Is there a common thread that unites this country or not? I mean, I think that's the most important question of our time. There's room for debate on it. You could just say we're a bunch of two-legged higher mammals with different shades of melanin walk in this geographic space and do what our iPhones tell us to do on a given day. Is that the country? Or is there some set of still remaining ideals that bind us together? That is the conversation that I think we need to have in this country. And yet I'm worried the same thing is going to happen next week on the Republican debate stage that's happening right here is we are suffering a form of derangement about (laughs) the recent past that at some point we are all going to have to say we lay down arms and ask ourselves, do we actually want to move forward or do we actually just want a national divorce? And that- Wow. (laughs) Wow. Wow. Again, Baby Graham Swami in the nicest way possible (laughs) just said that, hey, I'm afraid what's going to happen at the Republican debate is the same thing that's happening here, which is that we have such a form of derangement that we can't move on from the past, which is him basically telling Bill Maher, you're deranged, right? You have Trump derangement syndrome, okay? But that's literally what he's saying because that's what they're going to do at a Republican debate. Whether or not Trump is there, they're going to make the whole thing about Trump, right? They're going to make the whole thing about Trump and it's not going to be about what the vision of the country is moving forward is going to be about Trump, okay, and the 2020 election and January 6th and this and that. That's what it's going to be about. And that's the problem. Our country, we're so obsessed with the past, whether it be Trump, whether it be slavery, whether it be civil rights, whatever. We're so obsessed with the grievances of the past that we can't move forward into the future. We can't go anywhere. And Trump derangement syndrome, kind of like 
you know, the slavery de derangement syndrome that the race hustlers have is holding us back. It's holding us back. <laughs> He's so focused on what happened in the 2020 election. What did Trump do in the 2020 election, which ultimately uh, resulted in nothing, right? Trump didn't like the outcome of the election. He, you know, went through legal means, in my opinion, to try to protest the election. Okay, he uses freedom of speech to say, hey, I don't agree with this. And ultimately, what ended up happening? When it was time for him to leave office, he took his ball, he went home, right? He didn't declare martial law. He didn't try to take control of the military to stay in power. He didn't refuse to leave the White House. He didn't become a dictator. He left. And that tells you everything you need to know about whether or not Trump is actually a quote-unquote threat to democracy. He's not. Because if he was, he would have stayed. If he was, he very well would not be alive. Okay, because that's what happens. You know, that's what happens. The fact that he left tells you that what Bill Maher is afraid of is just, it's, it's, it's nonsense. It's a boogeyman. And that boogeyman is continuing to haunt Bill Maher so bad that he can't get behind somebody that he clearly likes just because that person doesn't want to sit around and talk about Trump all day. He wants to talk about Trump's policies. He's going to talk to about, you know, how we can move forward into the future. But he don't want to sit around and talk about how Trump needs to be in jail, how Trump's so bad, how he hates Trump. Because he doesn't want to do that, Bill Maher's like, eh, you know, I'm not sure if I can get behind this. This is what's keeping the country divided. This is exactly what's keeping the country divided. The man ain't Trump, but I can't get behind you because you don't want to condemn Trump. This is this is shameful. I like, do you want the divorce again, to just be done with it. That, you go home and call it a ball game. That sounds more like Obama. That was Obama. Let's move forward. Yes. I, I, I don't want to sort of take, I, mean, I, I deeply disagree with Obama or any things, but I know you mean that in a good way, but let us move forward as one nation. And that's the challenge. We live in a more challenging time well, than we did even in 2008. And so let me just ask you, do you believe, Bill, that there is, like, that there exists? I have friends to, who would give me the answer to this question. The answer they would give is no, and that we need to get a national divorce and move on with it. I have friends both on the right and the left this, this, who say this, which is which is saddening to this me. This talk has to stop. It is saddening to me. Right. No. Deeply we, saddening. We, we agree on that. And and so and so then what is that common thread that unites us? What is it? We think it exists. Let's talk about it. Merit, meritocracy, the thing that my parents came here to pursue. But that doesn't unite but, us but, anymore. But, but because I think, the, see, this I think is, it unites most people. But if you're viewing this country through but, the prism of a okay, TV screen or but, social media right. algorithm, I'm t but the people then who it watch, looks like we don't. The people who watch MSNBC, which aren't very many, which is a good thing. Okay, actually. but they vote and they're and they and they. And but this is an important point. Okay. That's my okay. whole point. Is it's a small it's a, sliver of the population that creates the image uh, yes. of an artificial division that I think is mostly okay. artificial. But, yeah, so I can't review the whole interview, right? The video will be too long. But yeah, I mean, I'm with Vivek Ramaswamy in the sense that I, I think that this national divorce talk um, is not productive. This is why I don't come out here and make videos about the Civil War, okay, that is supposedly going to happen any day now that Tim Pool does basically on a almost semi-daily basis. Uh, no, I don't do that, okay? And the reason why is because that's not what I want. I, I believe that we can unite as a country around a shared set of ideals. However, it's going to take time to get there, and it's going to take the right candidate, the right leader to push us in that direction um i'm not necessarily sure if it's something that will happen today maybe not tomorrow but my hope is that it will happen in the future but if you got people who are so deranged over trump uh that they can't even consider a candidate that they otherwise would support just because that person doesn't want to denounce trump or to attack trump when trump is already most attacked and denounced man on earth I'm not seeing a path for unity, right? I think that the best case scenario here is that, you know, people who like blue liberal policies, Democrat policies, they're going to move to blue states and people that like conservative Republican policies, they're going to move to red states. And that's just what it's going to be. I think that's the real national divorce. 
that's going to happen. I think that's the real kind of civil war is just people going to be moving, right? They're going to be moving to states where, hey, we agree with it, what's going on here, you know, and that's just what it is. But, you know, I, I do hold out hope that there is something that can unite us. Unfortunately, I'm not sure if meritocracy can unite us because we have a whole side of political out that doesn't believe in it, right? They don't believe in meritocracy. They believe in equity, okay, which, again, is antithetical to meritocracy. So I don't know. But what I do know, again, is this type of Trump derangement syndrome that's displayed by people like Bill Maher, who's supposed to be classical liberals, um, this is part of the reason why we can't unite as a country. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.